thing that my mother said, leaned over to me in church today and said that she never felt like she was a true grown up until she sent her first son off on a mission. So, so I guess this is this is when when our family gets to feel grown up. So Okay, so this morning I was asked to give, well, not saying right now, this morning, actually this morning, I was asked to give a talk on the ways missionary work can make us happy. I based my talk on Doctrine and Covenants 42. It's a little bit of background. The saints up until this point had been living in Fayette, New York. And they'd all moved there, and they were just getting settled in, and the prophet gave them a call. Not all of them, just some of them. He went around and said, you are called to go to Ohio. And those who went to Ohio were set apart, and they were told to go there to receive a higher law. I ended up at this because I was thinking about the things that make missionary work. And I discovered that missionaries, their, their whole job is to live this higher law. The first thing they're taught, they're told to do is to preach to the entire earth, to give very specific instructions to the elders to go forth two by two and to teach the gospel. And that's what modern full-time missionary work is. But it's also applicable in our everyday life. We're each given opportunities daily to teach and help others. And when we take advantage of these, we can gain the blessings of the Spirit. Second thing, the law of obedience. He gives he gives several he, he restates the Ten Commandments and he gives he gives a couple other guidelines that they're to follow specifically if they're to build Zion. As as we're all building Zion, we need to remember that we're given we're given commandments and our um our ability to feel the spirit is based, is based on our obedience to these commandments, and that as we keep them, we're able to feel the Spirit in our lives, and we're able to teach better. And the third one is the law of consecration. Now this is how I ended up in this chapter. The law of consecration says that you'll give everything you have to the church. Missionaries spend two years of their lives devoting everything to the gospel. You give up you know, your entire social life, you give up music, you give up art, you give up friends, everything, and you go and serve the Lord. And by doing this, you're able to, you're able to think of, to think of others and not yourself, in a way that's very hard to otherwise. Now, we don't have the law of consecration on the earth in the same way that we did before, but we are taught that we need to consecrate our time and our talents to the church to make sure that we are given all we can in our callings and in our everyday lives to do this. Finally, it gives us teaching on healing. Now, healing is partly what's given in here, how to lay your hands on someone's head and help them when they're sick. But at the same time, healing is also very much about emotional, about spiritual needs. And when we follow the first three boxes, when we consecrate our lives, when we teach others, and when, and when we're obedient, we're able to help others in much deeper ways. We're able to heal people on a day-to-day -day basis, in just small ways, knowing when and where to use the Spirit to help other people. And so, so that's how I'm going to say, so that's the higher law that missionaries live, and it's fairly easy for anyone to follow that. Is that someone coming? Oh, yeah. Um. So, I always kind of imagined I'd go on a mission. I kind of knew I would, but it wasn't until six months ago when Andrew left that I really realized it was time for me to to go. Andrew's my cousin. He's almost exactly a year older than me, and he left to Thailand over the summer. And. He left right about the time I got the Melchizedek priesthood, and we were able to talk and discuss being missionaries. And because I wasn't 19 yet, I can put in my papers yet. But 
almost immediately after him leaving, I realized that building a mission wasn't something I was just going to do because. It was something I really wanted to do. I wanted to be able to spend that time teaching and learning, <coughs> and that I was excited for the changes that were going to happen during those two years. So I went, I got my papers all ready. It was exciting, and then I kind of forgot about it. I got my call, I was excited about it, but it didn't really sink in until about four days ago. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was doing my study and everything, but until four days ago, I hadn't really realized that, holy cow, I was going into the MCC in a week. And it's, you know, I've been kind of crazy and hyper ever since, because I realized that this is, this is kind of the end. You know, this, is, this is kind of a rite of passage, you know. I have the chance to go and devote two years of my life to the gospel and come back and be a very different person. And I don't know where we're going to find seats for you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but this opportunity is, is truly inspired and I'm excited to spend time out in the mission field teaching in Iowa and I'm also excited to spend time learning Spanish in the Mission Training Center as, fun, as difficult as that is going to be. But I know that I'm doing the right thing because I have a testimony that I have a Father in Heaven and I have an elder brother, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth and bore the sins of the world so that we can return and be like Him. Um, I know that missionary work is truly inspired. The way it works Every single part of it is, is the way it should be. And the opportunities that I've seen in other people's lives and in mine wouldn't be possible if it worked for missionary work. I'd like to bear my testimony that temples are, are wonderful. I had the chance to go to the Manti Temple yesterday morning with my father and realized as I was in there one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever been in. And not because it's perfect, but because it's not quite perfect. It was built by people, but it's people who had consecrated their time and talents to the way they knew the best to create this wonderful building where they could worship. And temples give us a chance to worship in a special way, to be, to be very close to our heavenly parents and to to the way we can be. Um, I like to bear my testimony that family is a, is a perfect institution. It's, it's the way things were in the pre-mortal life and they are in heaven. And if we pay attention to how family works here, we'll be able to learn a whole lot more than we'd ever think was possible. And I like to say those things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's odd to watch <coughs> from the old baby stage through to the <coughs> talking so much that his mother had to lock him in the bathroom. Had to lock herself in the bathroom space <laughs> to not be talked at constantly through the. Uh, not wanting to talk to his parents in the teenage phase. That one doesn't last for Through the sending his son off to college stage and now the it it's, it's an amazing thing to watch that grow. Um, and it'd be interesting seeing the hands of the Lord um, the day we ordained Josh to the Mount Desert Priesthood. <coughs> happened to be the day when my brother was here from Australia. <laughs> also happened to be the day before his, brother, his uncle left for South Carolina. It was a wonderful chance to have a whole lot of family together. It was interesting giving that blessing and thinking about <coughs> a chance for me to think about what the Lord had in mind for him, or at least what I could figure out what the Lord had in mind. And I'm excited to see. <coughs> I don't think I could be old enough. <laughs> Someone who's sending a son out to be <coughs> feel that he's going to do a great job. So I appreciate you coming here and, and sharing this evening with us. And I guess we've done lots of talking.